Spirituality is a particular term which actually means dealing with intuition. In the theistic tradition, there is notion of clinging into a word. A certain act is regarded as uh, pleasing to a divine principles. A certain act is regarded as pleasing for the divine whatever. In the tradition of non-theism, however, it is very direct that the case history are not particularly important. What is actually important is here and now. Here and now. Now is definitely now. We try to experience what is available there on the spot. There's no point in thinking that a past so did exist that we could have now. This is now. This very moment. This very moment. Nothing mystical, just now, very simple, straightforward. And from that nowness, however, arises a sense of intelligence, always, that you are constantly interacting with the reality one by one, spot by spot, constantly. We actually experience fantastic precision, always. But we are threatened by the now, so we jump to the past or the future. Paying attention to the materials that exist in our life, all these choices take place all the time, but none of them are regarded as bad or good per se. Everything we experience are unconditional experience. They don't come along with the label by saying this is regarded as bad, or this is good, but we experience them, but we don't actually pay heed to them properly. We don't actually regard that as a, that we are going somewhere. We regard that as a hassle, waiting to be dead. Waiting to be dead. Waiting to be dead. Waiting to be dead. That's the problem. And that is not trusting the nowness properly that what is actually experienced now possessed a lot of powerful things. It is so powerful that we can't face it. Therefore, we have to borrow from the past, invite future all the time. And maybe that's why we seek religion. Maybe that's why we march in the street. March in the street. Maybe that's why we complain to the society. Maybe that's why we vote for the presidents. It's quite ironical. Very.
very funny indeed. The more you begin to investigate what we think we understand, where we came from, what we think we're doing, the more you begin to see we've been lied to. We have been misled away from the true and divine presence in the universe that men have called God. I don't know what God is, but I know what he isn't. And unless and until you are prepared to look at the whole truth, and wherever it may go, whoever it may lead to, the more you educate yourself, the more you understand where things come from, the more obvious things become, and you begin to see lies everywhere. You have to know the truth and seek the truth, and the truth will set you free. We don't want to be unkind, but we want to be factual. We don't want to cause hurt feelings, but we want to be academically correct in what we understand and know to be true. Along with all other related theologies is an historical fraud. These religions now serve to detach the species from the natural world, and likewise each other. They support blind submission to authority, and in turn, awful crimes can be justified in the name of a divine pursuit. And most critically, it empowers the political establishment who have been using the myth to manipulate and control societies. The religious myth is one of the most powerful devices ever created, and it serves as the psychological soil upon which other myths can flourish. A myth is an idea that, while widely believed, is false. In a deeper sense, in the religious sense, a myth serves as an orienting and mobilizing story for a people. The focus is not on the story's relation to reality, but on its function. A story cannot function unless it is believed to be true in the community or the nation. It is not a matter of debate. If some people have the bad taste to raise the question of the truth of the sacred story, the keepers of the faith do not enter into debate with them. They ignore them or denounce them as blasphemous. Is it round or flat? <laughs> Results from a new study reveal a third of young American millennials aren't sure that the earth is round. Here's what 18 to 24 year olds said when asked, do you believe the world is round or flat? 66% have always believed the earth is round, yippee. 9% always thought the world was round, but more recently became skeptical. 5% always thought the world was flat, but more recently had doubts, good for them. 4% always believe the world is flat. People tell the youth to fight the power. They don't mean Copernicus, right? I mean, there's some things that we can look at here and all understand that we're on the same page. But I would say that people should have a, a better understanding of why it is they believe what they believe. Mm. The answer really is because all the smart people say so. And that right. should never be your baseline of why you think something is or is not true. <laughs> That's right. They're clapping their own state's <laughs> demise. All right, I think we're done here. Focus on the road, please. Not talk to her so she can concentrate, please. Enough people said that the earth was flat. So the earth was flat. Then they said the earth was round. So the earth was round. The earth is round. Prove it. Science proves it. <laughs> science. Anyone understands the science, huh? Eyes on the road, please, always. Enough people talk about something, right? Then it becomes fact. Then they put it in the books, and then the book becomes fact. Then it's settled. Then no one understands it anymore. No one even talks about it anymore. Fuck.
be a good conversation starter at the Thanksgiving dinner table next week, or at least an interesting one. Do you believe the Earth is a sphere? The answers you get might surprise you. Curving horizon, the sloping sea level, the spin of the Earth. Unless you can see these phenomena with your own eyes, they may not be true. Unlike what we've been told in school, the Earth looks like a snow globe, round but not sphere. The North Pole is at the center of most flat Earth maps, with the ice of Antarctica holding everything in. And the number of people who think so is growing. Thousands, if not millions of people, believe the world is flat. And it's the subject of tonight's special report. WCIA3's Aaron Eads is here with us now. And Aaron, go. flat Earth theory is actually getting pretty popular. Yeah, believe it or not, the number of people who believe the Earth is flat is actually growing. Scientists might have an idea of why that is, and it's worth talking about. And what better place to do so than one of the flattest places in the country right here in Central Illinois. It doesn't get much flatter than this. Geological survey data shows Douglas County is the flattest county in Illinois, which is the second flattest state in the whole country. On a clear day, it seems like you can see forever, but you can't. Through the eyes of a person of an average height, the horizon is about three miles away. But that's it. You can go up higher to see a greater distance, but you'll never be able to see the whole world no matter how high you get. But there are ideas that this is a sham. NASA, a fraudulent organization bent on siphoning your tax dollars. The moon landing didn't happen. Those iconic blue marble images seen from space, fakes. In a world of disagreements large and small, for something as clear as this horizon, the interpretation could be infinite. The biggest concern with the flat earth movement is how fast it's gaining steam. Scientists are worried that flat earth could become a political issue like climate change, vaccination, vaccination or evolution. Guys. All right. Fascinating stuff. All right, Aaron, thank you. Very interesting. Well, new this morning, all our lives, we've been taught that the, there's little doubt that the Earth is round, of course. We've seen the images from space, but not everyone's really convinced. There's a whole group of people who are yeah. not convinced. Uh, Denver 7's Nicole Brady joins us live this morning. And Nicole, a conference dedicated to people who think the Earth is flat kicks off today. It is happening in Denver. The Flat Earth International Conference is today and tomorrow. And in case you're not familiar with this, there are some variations in what flat earthers believe, but some common themes are the Earth is not a sphere, as you said. It's not moving. We are not spinning on an axis or revolving around anything. And they don't really believe in space. Or the billboard for the convention just went up along E-470. People can go there, be uninhibited about their beliefs, what they think. They can discuss it openly and freely. One of the theories he now believes Flat Earthers also do not believe that there is any th such thing as space. So what about astronauts? The space shots are actually sh shot in a swimming pool. And they are shot in a place that's called the NASA Neutral Buoyancy Lab. And in this Neutral Buoyancy Lab, they have a full-sized mock-up of the ISS. Bob knows this is controversial. He welcomes debates and says... Investigate it yourself. Do your own research. That's what matters. If you are curious about the International Conference, make sure to visit us online. We have more information there at cbsdenver.com. Live in Denver, Jamie Leary covering Colorado Friends. And many attending the conference here say the theory has really gained popularity over the past few years, enough popularity where they can hold conferences like this. For the last two to three years, it's really taken off. I don't really know what the what the reason is for that. Maybe it's just time. One factor of the growing popularity may be the coverage in the media. It became a hot topic recently when Duke's very own Kyrie Irving came out and claimed he believes the Earth is flat. Yes. We're intelligent people from all walks of life and all ages. In Cary, David Hurst, CBS, North Carolina.